Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov was born in 1844 and died in 1908. He was a Russian composer known for his affiliation with the five, a circle of composers who promoted Russian art music that included Mili Balakarev, Alexander Gordon, Modest Morozovsky, and Kesar Kui. Before his music career blossomed, Rimsky Korsakov was an officer for the in the Imperial Russian Navy, and in 1862, during the American Civil War, he sailed to the United States with all ports of call in New York City, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. Even after turning to music and assuming a full-time position at the St. Petersburg Conservatory, he remained in active service as an inspector of naval bands throughout Russia. Many of Rimsky's Korsakov's most successful symphony works are widely performed today, including his Capriccio Espanol, Russian Easter Overture, and Shakirza. Our piece, Dance of the Tumblers, comes from the final act of his third opera, The Snow Maiden, which premiered in 1882 and was based on a fairy tale that depicts the opposition of forces between King Frost Winter and Sun God Spring. The Dance of Tumblers depicts two unique towns, the boundless energy of the Russian Kimroki or street performance.
Our first work tonight, Ancient Wonder Suite, is a musical depiction of four of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Movement one depicts the awe-inspiring grandeur and size of the Temple of Artemis, located in Euphysus, present-day Turkey. Built in 6 BC, this temple was twice the size of the Parthenon. Movement two depicts the majesty of the Great Lighthouse at Alexandria, Egypt, which withstood the elements for over a thousand years, well into the 14th century. Before it crumbled into the Alexandra Harbor, the ruins were discovered in the harbor in 1904, right off the shore of the island Pharaoh. Movement 3 portrays the mystery and expert craftsmanship used to build the Great Pyramids of Giza, the only ancient wonder still standing today. The three pyramids took 20 years to build and the largest, sorry, and the largest, the Pyramid of Khufu stands 481 feet tall. The final movement represents the enormity and awe-inspiring feeling one may experience when seeing the great statue of Zeus at Olympia, Greece. This statue stood almost 40 feet tall and was built in 430 BC of ivory and gold. Like the Great Lighthouse, this statue stood for nearly a thousand years.
The third Brandenburg Concerto by Johann Sebastian Bach showcases his incredible compositional talents. Bach composed these works around 1721 in an attempt to gain employment with the wealthy Wargrave of Brandenburg, Christian Ludwig. His dedication to the Margrave reads, As I had the good fortune a few years ago to be heard by your royal highness, I your highness's command, and as I noticed that your highness took some pleasure in the little talents which heaven has given me for music, your highness deigned to honor me with the command to send your highness some pieces of my composition, begging your highness most humbly not to judge their imperfection with the rigor of that discriminating and sensitive taste which everyone knows him to have for musical works, but rather to take into benign consideration with a profound respect and the most humble obedience which I thus attempt to show. While these six Concerti Bach composed as a job application are beloved around the world, sadly they did not ingratiate Bach with the Margaret, and he was not offered employment. Nonetheless, the six Brandenburg Concerti are stunning examples of German Baroque compositional style. We're doing this conductor list so orchestras can stand.
From pop violinist Lindsey Sterling comes this arrangement of two classic English carols, Carol of the Bell and God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. These melodies are cleverly reimagined and superimposed over a driving Celtic dance rhythm, performed by percussionists Camden Carlin and Olivia Renaldi.
Stella program is a finale from Tchaikovsky's Epic Fifth Symphony, composed between May and August of 1888. This symphony is not programmatic, but it is united by a singular theme heard at the beginning of this movement. This theme is often dubbed a fate theme, but in the finale it transforms into a triumphant march. After hearing the second performance of this work, Tchaikovsky felt it was a failure. Sounds like he was his own worst critic, but in this case, the fifth of the U.S. premiere in Boston four years later was also poorly received. A reviewer for the Boston, Boston Evening Transcript, October 24, 1892, wrote, of the fifth, fifth symphony, one hardly knows what to say. In the finale, we have all the untamed fury of the Casa, wedding itself for deeds of atrocity against all the sterility of the Russian steppes. The furious peroration sounds like nothing so much as a horde of demons struggling in a torrent of brandy. The music growing drunker and drunker, pandemonium del delirium tremens, raving and above all, noise verse confounded. So audience, we leave it to you to decide. Is this a symphonic masterpiece or a cacophony of drunken, drunken bravo rousers? Thank you for coming tonight. Please stop by the big sale on your way out. And take special note that we are holding a fundraiser at Panera December 15th from 4 to 8 p.m. Please pick up a flyer on your way out and present it at the checkout to help us earn 20% of each sale.
send an extra special thank you to VCAM, who's recording our concert. It will be available on YouTube in a few weeks. For all of you for supporting your students, and all of you for practicing occasionally. <laughs> um, like Hans said, it's a fundraiser at Panera this Friday. Pick up a flyer on your way out. I hope you all have a lovely holiday season and a very happy new year. Thank you. Okay.